Now it's time for the uh, International Press Review. Florence Filmino is uh, with us here today. We're going to start off in South Africa, in fact, aren't we? Press there reacting to the election of Enkans uh, Sana Dela Minizuma as uh, chairperson of the African Union. That's right. It's the first time a woman has been elected to the position, and we're going to take a look at the Daily Maverick, which is a website from uh, South Africa, which hails it as a victory for South African uh, diplomacy. First of all, it was a surprising win for her. She was up again in a bitter, bitter fight excuse me, uh, with the former chairman and Jean Ping, uh, and it seemed unlikely the deadlock was going to end. Odds were against her, so they call this an astounding result. It's a big win for people who were in favor of a big African country being uh, in charge of the African Union, and it's a big win for uh, Af Anglophone Africa. Uh, and the article points out that the fact that South Africa uh, put so much effort into this campaign is proof that South Africa wants to be recognized as a power broker and to have more clout within the African Union. Uh, but it points out that the, the fight with Jinping was very bitter. So the challenge for Dlamini uh, Zuma is going to be to steer the African Union away from the ugly remnants of this fight. Moving on to Syria, um, fears growing there with the country's chemical weapons. Where's this story? This is coming from the Wall Street Journal, which actually was already talking about this story uh, last week, and they're coming out with another article today saying that Syria is moving chemi its chemical we weapons stock. Now, Syria allegedly has a vast arsenal of chemical weapons, and it started moving this uh, this arsenal out of the storage facilities. Now, Syria has denied this, but. Uh, just this rumor is alarming many people in the international community. Now, these chemical weapons would include a uh, sarin nerve, nerve agent, mustard gas, and uh, cyanide. And um, in the United States, uh, security officials are divided as to exactly why Syria might be moving uh, th this arsenal. I, some fear that Damascus could use these weapons against civilians and rebel fighters, uh, potentially as part of a targeted ethnic cleansing campaign. Others say that Bashar al-Assad could just be trying to safeguard this arsenal or just using it as a threat. But regardless of why this arsenal might be moving, it's, uh, it's their fears that the conflict could escalate even further. Okay. And, and sorry, <laughs> sticking to Syria, yeah. um, there's a, just there's it's getting a lot of coverage in general in, in, in the international press today. Um, and I think a lot of this can be summed up by cartoon that's in the China Daily, where you see a very grim, grim reaper uh, portraying uh, Syria with blood uh, dripping from its scythe and uh, flicking a peace dove uh, away. So that's kind of sums up what the international press is saying today about Syria. And you're staying in the Middle East. Um, this is a story which was around uh, over the weekend. A 57-year-old man in Israel set himself on fire Saturday. Saturday night, getting a lot of attention, and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calling it a great and personal tragedy. That's right. Now, he did this during a demonstration on Saturday with about 8,000 people, and it was marking the anniversary of last summer's widespread uh, uh, protest in, in support of social and economic change. Uh, this is an article in The Independent that that's outlying just exactly who this man is. His name is Moshe Silman, 57 years old, a former businessman that fell upon harsh times. Now, he's he's in very critical condition. And it's interesting to note that before he set himself on fire in a 265-word note, he blamed the Israeli government for, quote, robbing him. Now, there's an also uh, the Jerusalem Post, uh, his editorial is, is dedicated to this. And they say that, yes, we can be sympathetic to Silman and pray for his speedy recovery. And yes, this does raise ethical issues regarding the limitations of uh, Israel's uh, welfare system. There are certainly reforms that are necessary in terms of housing reform or improving uh, public transport, but this should not serve as a symbol of the social protest. And the Jerusalem Post is actually quite harsh about this. They say that uh, this man is no Mohammed Bouazizi because some people were comparing him to the man in Tunisia who set himself on fire, which sparked the Arab Spring there. They say, you know, you can't compare Israel and Tunisia. No matter how good a system is, some people just inevitably fall through the safety net. Um, and they say that self-immolation is nothing to emulate, and this man should not become a symbol for uh, the struggle for better, a better social economic situation in Israel. And finally, moving uh, to a story here in France, this is uh, in The Independent, calling it the Battle of the Blondes. That's right. It's between the two of the world's most celebrated blondes. Uh, they're about to face off in court. Now, it yeah, might come as a surprise. Intriguing stories, isn't it? <laughs> There's, well, one of them is Madonna, and I guess yeah. the other one is Marine Le Pen, which I don't know if you could say she's a world-celebrated blonde, but anyway, uh, this <laughs> she comes <is> after. <laughs> she is now. Yeah. This comes after Madonna gave a concert in Paris over the weekend, mm. and during her show at one point, she flashes up this image of Marine Le Pen on the screen, and she has a swastika 
swastika on her forehead. Mm-hmm. So people within the far right party are very upset about this, and they've uh, they're going to make a former legal complaint for making public insults. Marine Le Pen herself says this is just a stunt for uh, Ma- uh, Madonna just to you know get some attention. Mm-hmm. Mar- and Marine Le Pen's father, however, says that his daughter should ask for one million euros. So this might wow. be uh, you know might might cost Madonna a buck. Be interesting to see if it's a story that runs or if uh, that's the end of it. Florence, <laughs> thank you very much, Florence. Visit Pelmano with the uh, International Papers on France Cap.